Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, it's been a doozy of a week, so let's see if we can't uh, finish it on a high note, right? All right, so I've got two DMGs here. Um, you can go ahead and ignore any notes you might see on these. Uh, but what we've got here on the left, I have the uh, one chip IPS kit. Uh, same video I did a little while back. I left the uh, film on the screen because I hadn't fully intended on installing it in another Game Boy. I still don't have that Game Boy. Quite frankly, I haven't even ordered it yet, but that's besides the point. On the right here, I have a perfectly unmodified, painfully stock, play it loud, DMG. Um, I was going to do a video on this when I first got it, but um, one thing led to another and I had to take it apart and clean it up immediately without being able to prep for a video. But anyway, the point is not this DMG or this DMG even, but something that I picked up from Taobao here. So I got the package. I haven't even opened it yet. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll experience it together. So my merchandise has been inspected by Lisa, so we can we all know who to blame if there's something wrong with it. Uh, but anyway, this is a screen kit that I ordered off of Taobao. Get this open here. And hopefully there's nothing in here that I have to blur out or something. But I did go through an agent because um, even though some sellers on Taobao do ship to the US, not all of them do. And I'm just quite frankly used to going through an agent at this point. I use Superbuy. I'll go ahead and throw a link to this down in the description as well. But this is the moon screen, quote unquote, uh, DMG IPS kit. And what makes this different compared to the uh, one chip DMG IPS kit, which I got right here, you can see this one you have your screen and your converter board. And this is a V2, the V3 looks a little bit different, but good enough for our purposes. Notice they both have their own standalone contact board or button board, but on the moon screen, you have instead of a wheel that spins up and down, you have a uh, nubbin that you flick up or down or click. And the actual conversion happens on this board instead of on a standalone board open up the rest of this here should have the rest of the parts all right now you'll have to forgive me this is very beta um, I don't actually have any instructions with this kit and that has a lot to do with the language barrier involved um, there were a few pictures but basically this goes like this and they do include an uh, adhesive that you can stick down to uh, stick the screen to this board. I'm not going to do that yet. We're going to test fit it first, but then that just plugs in just like that. The back of this connector opens up and then you should be able to slide this in here, should being the operative word, or maybe it is in. I don't know. Try closing it and find out. Yeah, must be in. All right. And then they have it set so you can plug this in. You should probably plug in the big cable first. That's another one of these connectors that I absolutely despise. There we go. You can feed that cable through the top there and then bend it down like that. But we'll worry about that later. It also includes this. I'm not sure what this is for. Maybe this goes over the back here. I'm guessing that's what it is because of how big it is. And then, yeah, like I said, this does stick the screen down. Well, let me go ahead and get the DMG torn apart here. And uh, just for reference, let's make sure it works. When I got this console, it did not work. Uh, I had to make 
several repairs. And last time I used it, it worked. But it's been a while. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, seems fine. And we even have sound. It's a little quiet, though. Yeah. Anyway, probably means it's time for new caps or something. Well, let's get it on. Uh, forgive me. There's about a billion screws in one of these things. So I'll probably fast forward through this. Alright, six screws. You can go ahead and separate the front half from the back half and uh, don't mind that. Like I said, there were uh, there were some issues. Uh, we do not need to do any work on the back half of the console, so once you've got the front half off, you can just set the back aside. We'll come back to that later. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you're reshelling your console, of course, you're going to want to pop this in the new shell. Uh, I think I need to pull this out. Maybe I can slip my, um, cause I want to test the power on this. Let's actually, before I even move on to, I should have left this plugged in. Before we move on to actually installing it, let's get a baseline power reading. And I think I test these at I think I've tested my DMGs at 4.8 volts before. And thanks to this secondary wheel, dialing that in is so much easier. All right. So let's pop the game in first. All right, which one's which? This one should be negative, right? Yeah. frame so you can at least see it. And I noticed a lot of screen glitching on this. I don't I don't know if that has anything to do with um, the backboard or the front board or what. The uh, audio is certainly cutting out though. I'm hoping that's an issue with the front board. later. Come on. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Maybe the cable's not plugged in all the way. But uh, anyway, in the overworld, because I'm not hitting any buttons, uh, just trying to walk away. In the overworld at 4.75, let's try 4.8 volts. Or pull in... 51.5 milliamps, give or take. So let's try. Let's try the new board. Or do I have that upside down? I hope not. You know what? We gotta unplug that. Now I might have to grab a different DMG backboard. I don't think there's any compatibility issues in particular with uh, Play It Loud versions. I just think mine in particular might have some issues. Like I said, because it was. I mean, you just saw it was running left. Um, my audio was very quiet because that was at max volume, by the way. All right, let's 
Let's try it out. See what we got. Here goes nothing. All right. So I have no even LED light. Oh, there it goes. It just didn't even flip on for some reason. But hey, seems to work. There's that screen glitching again, but we saw that with the original LCD. I'm not sure if there's something on the film. I'm not sure why it just reset either. I think that's just something on the I hope that's something on the film. But with the new screen, you can see it's pulling Quite a bit more. Let's get in game so we can try it out. And there's no volume because there's no speaker attached to the new kit. You gotta salvage your old one. Uh, where are? I need conductive buttons or something. Oh, and I have the same problem. Yeah, I'm going to have to grab a different backboard. But uh, in the overworld, at the default brightness level, we're pulling 121 milliamps. And uh, let, me, let me kill these lights so you can see the screen a little bit better. So like the other IPS kits, this uses a, um, a 4x integer scaling. So basically every single original pixel on the original DMG uh, converts to four pixels on this screen. And quite frankly, I think the effect is amazing. Uh, but if we press up on the nubbin, we get nothing. Press down, it looks like the brightness is going down. All the way at minimum brightness, it's 96 milliamps. Bring that back up to max brightness. And it looks like it tops out at 148, 147. And I have a feeling we'll need Google Translate for the next step. So I'm just grabbing my phone here. And if you click the button, no, click and hold. There it is. Loading project. Oh, so you can switch to different presets. And check this out. Some of these presets have um, that, I forget what it's called. Uh, the, the pixel grid that some of you guys like so much, like you can see it doesn't have it on this preset, but it does have it on this preset. And quite frankly, I don't like it, but I know some of you guys are nuts over it. Um, looks like this one has it. Also, oh, maybe the uh, scaling on this one's even higher. I'll have to take a close-up image. That's interesting. Oh, look, and you can change the change the language. I'm so happy they did that because. The original version of the screen, um, YouTuber by the name of the Chinese guy, uh, looks like he's retired and stopped making videos, but he reviewed the original version of this kit, which was a hot mess as far as the install goes. Um, it was basically just a whole bunch of soldering, um, about a million wires, so on and so forth, whereas this one's pretty much plug and play aside from the speaker. But that one didn't have a language option. There's a menu for brightness. Looks like there's 100 steps or 95 steps. Presumably zero would be, or 94 steps. It doesn't go all the way up to 100. Position. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. You can, oh, you can't. Phone's too close. You can move the uh, position of the image within the uh, game here or within the screen, in case your install doesn't have it quite centered. Oh, that's so cool. 
what is it? it goes from all the way at the top zero to 99 I'm gonna leave it at about 50 or so lines off on yep uh, and here we go now we can change the color of the lines um, does that go up to a no it goes up to 63 okay I'm not going to mess with that too much. Game color. Game color one. Oh, so you can change all four of the original, all four of the colors, and then you can save it to a preset. All right, so how cool is that? Look at all these options you have. There should be one more option. I don't know how to turn it on, um, but there's a, uh, or maybe it is on. Hang on, let me adjust the power a little bit to six volts. No, it's not doing anything. So there's another option to enable a bar across the top of the screen so that you have a, um, a power meter, essentially. But I can't quite figure that out. I thought it would be one of the options in this menu here. And I'm just clicking the wheel to go through. You can save it to a different project. It says project, but I really think that should be preset. It's kind of annoying that you have to scroll through the uh, options. One by one, because there's only you can only click, click and hold, go up or go down. And it looks like there's, uh, oh shoot, now I have to go through this all again. Yeah, so there's short press, which does nothing, medium press, which pulls up the preset menu. And I don't know why preset one <laughs> defaults to Chinese. <laughs> now it looks like half of them do. And then a long press. Oh, that wasn't a long press. That wasn't a long press either. So about four seconds and you pull up this menu again. All right, so enough messing with this. I'm going to go pull apart another one of my Game Boys and swap out the board because I don't want to install this in a console that I can't even play. I mean, it's just automatic here. I'm not pressing anything and it's just walking. So I'm gonna go find a, uh, a different board. I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so good news. It only took three tries, but I found a DMG that seems to work perfectly fine with this screen kit, with one exception. The LED still doesn't work. I have no idea why. I, um, I hooked my multimeter up to it, and it looks like it should be working, um, but for some reason the circuit is only feeding one volt into the LED. I don't know what's up with that. Um, I don't know if that's by design and there's just something I have to enable somewhere. I don't know. Like I said, there's no instructions with this kit, so it's really difficult to figure out. But anyway, uh, I found this DMG. All the buttons seem to work. Oh, that's interesting. Apparently it just works with my uh, fingers. So if I have my uh, middle finger on the bottom and then my thumb on top, I can just use my fingers to... Uh, press the buttons. How about that? At least I could do the d-pad. I can't do... Oh, I can do that. Interesting. Anyway, sorry, distracted. Um, the first DMG I tried, this yellow Play It Loud one, uh, this one's not working, but for unrelated issues. Uh, I think this one I don't know, I, 
I think this one just still has some water damage that I never ended up cleaning up. So I'll probably do a video on this one at a later point, but I'm going to go ahead and swap this backboard into this shell. Uh, for reference, this is a CPU board 08. You can check that in the uh, battery compartment or you can pull the um, actual board out and then check the actual uh, the, the, the product numbers on the CPU itself. You won't be able to see them on this model because this, since this is a play it loud model, it uses uh, epoxy blob components and we'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute here when I get this thing torn apart. Uh, this board didn't work. Um, I'm not sure the reason, I'm not sure if it's just incompatible with this mod or if this mod doesn't work with CPU 05 boards, but I'll throw some footage I took and keep in mind this is slow motion but you can see the screen shifting up a pixel and down a pixel up a pixel and down a pixel uh, and then here's what it looks like in full sp full speed um, I don't know I, I looked at it and I felt like I was about to go into like a blood sugar coma or something and so I had to take some slow motion footage just to see you know was I you know did I eat something funny or is the screen actually just doing something and it turns out it wasn't working so I don't know like I said I don't know if that's this DMG or if um, it's not compatible with CPU 05 boards or what um, but let me go ahead and switch this off here and power usage is the same on all of the models I've tested so far uh, so pop this out oh and I did end up flipping this cable around and taping the screen down just because I keep handling this thing uh, but this board here is a C oh this is also a CPU 05 so there's something about this it doesn't like I don't know what it is we'll have to do some more investigation at some point oh I gotta switch the Game Boy off and then yeah I guess I'll do a montage swapping these two so we need a GIS driver and these are JIS screws, not Phillips, but bear with me just a moment. All right, just four screws in each, not too bad. But this whole board should come out. And you can see here, when I flip this over, we've got epoxy blobs on all the discrete components. And that's that's just how the Play It Loud models were made. I mean, this isn't a fake Game Boy. They were just make these. They were just pumping these things out in such a volume that they had to make them cheaper and quicker. And this is what they came up with. Um, now I don't see anything in particular wrong with this board. Like I don't see any major issues. Just looking at it. But there are quite a few things that I would like to clean up at some point. Like these solder joints and all these capacitors just look super crusty. Um, these resistors especially. I don't know what that is. I don't know why it looks that way. And then of course there's this whole mess right here. Uh, this is just liquid electrical tape that I used to insulate it because there was a ton of corrosion on this. But anyway, we don't care about this job get this one here and usually the uh, power boards on the play it loud models if I recall correctly are better um, mostly because they're just newer so I'm not sure if it's power board related I don't recall there being any damage to the power boards but so be it anyway this is a DMG CPU B model CPU 05 board I should probably pull the other one out and see if that's also a CPU B. I imagine it is, but you know, it's always good to get more data on that. So you and I will know that this DMG is no longer very original, but that's okay. It'll still work for our purposes. And um, heck, I guess at some point I can try Super Game Boy swapping this one now. Now that it has a uh, swappable CPU. All 
All right, and I'll put this one back together later. We don't need to waste time on that right now. All right, so now let's move on to the top half. And again, just gonna fast forward because there's about eight million screws. All right, got all that out, I think. Word doesn't really want to come out. I think it's just stuck down with some adhesive. But I have had this apart before, so it should be. Unless y'all are just sitting there laughing at me because I forgot a screw, but I really don't see it. If I did. Oh, no, it was stuck down with adhesive. Okay. Which is weird. I've been in this one before. I, I've cleaned it. This, that's why this one is surprisingly clean compared to what I usually work with. But who knows? All right, let's get the speaker because the new kit doesn't come with one pre-installed. And that is like the one, the single downside these kits. For whatever reason, they just don't include a speaker. Oh, you know, I know why that is. I know why they don't include a speaker. The reason they don't include a speaker is because there aren't any aftermarket speakers this size with this spec, and because pretty much everyone who's installing one of these kits already has one of these. So it's just on the... Uh, installer to swap that in but I don't know it's just I guess it's to save a little bit of money you know everyone already has a speaker so we might as well just use that one instead of including a speaker with every kit you know increase the cost of each kit for or by I don't know 25 cents I don't know how much speakers cost. I know they're more expensive than that, but I imagine in bulk they'd be pretty cheap. Or at least the bulk that these kits are. The numbers that these kits are running. You know, you ship a few thousand kits, 25 cents a kit, you know, that's a few hundred bucks. Might as well save that kind of money, you know? I mean, I suppose you could always just make the kit more expensive. But nobody likes that. Oh, speaking of, I never actually mentioned the price, did I? So, ooh, dropping things. I don't actually remember the price. So that's why I didn't really mention it. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, this ran 350 Chinese yuan, which, if I recall correctly, worked out to about 55 bucks. And then I spent another... 30 or so getting this kit shipped to me now I did pay for expedited shipping so there are definitely cheaper options um, and I also shipped quite a few things I didn't just have this kit shipped to me I bought I bought some other goodies this for an upcoming video it's funny it came with an ad for this but anyway uh, what's next I think let's do some test fitting so, this, again, it just came with some pictures. You know, it says you need to trim a few things, but I honestly don't see anything that looks like it needs to be trimmed. So I'm going to, I'm going to stick this screen down first. Because I don't see any reason why I would have to... remove it. I'm probably going to regret this. But I include this nice thick adhesive and oh god if I have to remove this it's not coming off. And 
and I'm just going to go ahead and try to line up the screen with the lines on the PCB. It doesn't matter too much anymore because we're committed. And that is thick. Some might compare to a bowl of oatmeal. And that seems to go in there without modification to the shell. Ah, I see some potential issues. Um, for starters, you can see the edges of the screen. I don't think I'm gonna worry about that too much. But let's drop this speaker in there. Let's drop that in there and uh, I guess bear with me while I put all these screws back. All right, there we go. Looks pretty good. Just had a note to myself to save this Game Boy for this screen kit. I had no idea I'd have to swap in a whole new backboard to pop that in. Oh yeah, I did mention I flipped the screen cable around. It just, I feel like it goes in easier with the pins down on this side and it just makes me more comfortable with the pins up on this side but stri not strictly required. Fold that down, fold that like that. And let's cram in the final screws, yeah? There was a hair in there that I meant to remove, but oh well, too late. All right, so it looks like for the uh, contrast wheel, you might want to end up cutting off that little bottom lip like we have to do for the um, for this mod, for the one chip mod. But I just backed off the screws for now. I don't really feel like taking it apart again, but I'll probably have to because it doesn't quite click right. I also, forgot to install this so hopefully we don't need it uh, but let's try it out now I've had this issue before with my batteries and this is an issue specifically with my batteries um, the uh, little nub on here doesn't quite protrude as much as it does on uh, alkaline batteries because these are rechargeables now you can see they're close. It's stupid close, but it's still shorter. These work in pretty much everything except for my original Game Boys. I don't know what it is, or at least I do know what it is. I don't know why it is, but if we measure, you can see 1.67 millimeters on that and 1.55. Huh. Interesting. It looks like it's so much taller. 1.65. Helps if I measure it properly. Let me try this one again. Oh, you know what the issue is? I'm not measuring from the right spot. Hang on. Try that again. 1.28. So 1.65 versus 1.28. That, that 0.35 millimeters does make a difference because it has to stick inside the plastic to contact that contact. And hey, now that it's on batteries, I do see the light is, well, kind of on. And we definitely got to move the screen here. Oh, no, I wanted position. Turn that down. That's
It's not letting me like press and hold. I'm not sure why. But we'll go ahead and center that. Looks like we want it set to uh, about 33, 34. We'll leave the lines off because I don't like them. And there we go. I did forget to remove the um, the film, so I'll have to take this apart again at some point. But with all the issues I had at the beginning, I just wanted to make sure that it actually works. Uh, now, compared to the one chip kit, um, this screen is smaller. Uh, or at least the, the display area is smaller. Um, we can see if we measure this, the actual image is, forgive me, I'm trying to eyeball it through the lens, about 43 millimeters wide by, measure from this side, Uh, is that 38 in a fraction? Yeah, it looks like it is. So probably, probably 38.75. Um, I forget the uh, measurements of this kit, but I did post them. Um, so I'll go ahead and put some more details in the description. You can compare for yourself. You can look at the raw numbers there. Uh, but so far, I mean, it looks pretty darn good. Let's try. Try never drive, yeah. See if that still boots. Oh. Did you see that? Up at the top corner, there's a little red bar for the battery. I guess that only appears on startup or something. Let's try the scrolling bars test. Since the EverDrive appears to boot just fine. Let me set that down here. You can take a look here and let's see what it does on reset. Remember the screen resets every time the first S in scrolling goes off the edge of the screen. Now, as you can see on reset, it's not doing anything, which is absolutely perfect. That means this screen kit is handling resets even better than OEM screens. Uh, now I am noticing, now that I have this open, I'm noticing uh, there's these white spots in the corners. I'm worried that I might be putting too much pressure on this thing because if I push down, I can see they get worse. So I think I'm going to have to pop this open back off some screws a little bit. But, oh, you know what? I bet if we remove the original adhesive, because I forgot to do that too, I bet that'll take care of the issue. So we'll probably have to do a montage here, but let's do one more test. So you can see the battery there. I don't think that's detecting properly because these batteries should be a lot more charged than that. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's try Legend of Zelda here. Oh, yeah, that's real bad. We'll do the ghosting test here. So first thing I'm looking at are these posts here along the top uh, when the screen transitions. If there's any like um, after images of them whatsoever and honestly I don't see anything. It looks fantastic. The other thing I'm looking at is this dude's chain and you can see it's flickering. Um, that's pretty much expected behavior. Uh, how the original game works on the original screen is um, basically that. It just flickers the, sp the sprites on and off real quick because the original screen had so much ghosting uh, that would result in a transparency effect. And quite frankly, I think it's a brilliant workaround, but unfortunately it means with these screens that have better refresh rates, they just display it as flickering. Um, but quite frankly, man, this, this looks fantastic. Uh, so, oh, wow. 
And there's that piece of dust right under the screen too. Oh, well, I have to take it apart anyway. But yeah, that, that looks fantastic, man. Let's check one more thing here. I wonder if there's a way to get that to stay. Uh, let's go into gradient test. All right, so you can see out of the box, looks pretty good. Um, man, I really got to fix that though. I should probably fix that first. Let's check out some of the color options here. Position, and we can turn the lines on. See, I think that just blurs everything together and looks real messy. With it off, you can see perfect contrast with it on. Yeah. I don't, I mean, if, if that's your jam, there you go, but we're going to leave that off. All right. Oh, shoot. How do I change that? So game color one, I think that should be this uh, light gray here. And we can set this to pretty much any color we want. Again, you have to work through the entire menu. And for some reason, it's not letting me just... Click and hold. Get used to. Oh shoot. I wanted to change that too. But you see where I'm going with this. This is something that you have to play with. Game color three is black, by the way. Oh now it lets me click and hold. And I'm setting up for a horrible color combination, but y you see where I'm going with this. Yeah, I'd want to cycle through that again. Color zero, so that's... Oh, did it only work that one time? Come on. Yes, this clearly requires more tinkering. But nonetheless, you get the idea. You can set your own color, and the contrast in person is significantly better than what you're seeing right now. I can clearly tell the difference between these two colors. This one's blue, this one's green. I don't know what my phone's doing there. Maybe it'll look better on your screen. But, I mean, obviously this is a bad color combination for this. Anyway, there it goes. But yeah, super cool. You could set your own palettes. I love this thing, man. This is super cool. Um, I'm just gonna flip it off because I don't wanna deal with that god awful palette I just made. So it's kinda, I don't know, it's kinda disappointing that it doesn't come with any fun presets, I think. All the presets are kinda. Oh, you know what, let me pull up the gradient test and we'll take a look at the included presets. The cool thing is since the presets are independent from the actual system, you can flip through it while it's loading. All right, so the default one, oh, great. <laughs> it, it saved it, shoot. All right, well, I'll have to reset that at some point. The uh, first one has lines on, yellow, light gray, dark gray, black, uh, lighter yellow, lines off, purple, dark gray, black, lines on, looks looks like preset one just with lines on, or the first preset rather. This is awful. Uh, these first two colors are basically the same. This looks like the same thing. This is even worse. I think these are basically the same color. And then this is nice. This is what the first preset was before I started messing with it. But yeah, there we go. So I'm going to now have a montage, take this apart, and um, let's see if we can't get it working just a little bit better. I don't like those white spots or those brightness spots on the uh, LCD. 
So maybe we just got to back the screws off or even not include them at all. All right. I got to say though, this nice long ribbon cable, love it. I don't even care that it takes up more room internally. I'm so willing to put up with that. I'm just adding a, a crease to it to make this easier next time I close it. But I am going to back off that screw, back off that screw, back off this screw, back off this screw. And I think that should be good. Because it feels, without the screws in, it feels fine. All right, let's pop these bad boys back in. Place my Pokemon Silver, so we'll just keep playing with the EverDrive. Oh fuck, I forgot to peel off the adhesive again. Or the film. So you saw that even through a reset, the menu is still working. Color. through that. Right. Just overwrite that preset. Back in silver. And yeah, I just wanted to see if I'd notice any frame dropping or anything like that. And I don't. I mean, I didn't think I would. I didn't see any tearing or dropping in the uh, scrolling bar test. I'm not seeing any now. Let's, uh, ooh, I want to go back to the gradient test one more time. Oh, I see. A uh, single press brings up the battery gauge. So a single press brings up the battery gauge, uh, or a short press, rather. A medium press brings up the uh, presets, and then a long press of four seconds or more brings up the uh, menu. I think you have to get out of the presets first, yeah. Boom. And I want to point out that my uh, flick and hold is working again. And the difference is not these two screws back here but the two screws on the front board holding it in. So do not over tighten those at all. The four original screen screws. In fact, it's probably best to just omit those four screen screws. Um, but there we go. Again, no idea why that's not working. Maybe my kit's defective or something, but yeah, I'm super happy with this. Now I just gotta take it apart one more time, completely strip it to bits and remove that film and we're all good to go, but I'm not gonna do that on video. You guys have, this, this video's already been long enough. You guys have already seen me take this thing apart several times, but there it is, the uh, Taobao Moonscreen Kit. Um, I was wondering if that would time out, but I really don't think it will, and I was getting too impatient. Uh, I'm extraordinarily pleased with what I'm seeing so far. Uh, so far, the only downside that I see really is that the image itself is smaller than stock and you do see the edges of the LCD. Maybe with a slightly smaller screen lens, you can work around that. Otherwise, you can probably just mask off the sides with uh, some black vinyl tape. Um, 
but otherwise, yeah, this thing's super cool. I'll go ahead and throw some links in the description uh, to this kit itself from the seller I got it on Taobao. And again, yeah, it was like 350 Chinese yuan, which I think worked out to about 55 bucks. And then in my case, there was agent fees and then shipping on top of that. But shipping is going to depend entirely on where you are and what service you choose. And your agent fee will depend entirely upon your agent and whether you have one or not. Uh, again, the agent I used was Superbuy. Can't say I recommend them, but I mean, it did get to me just fine. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and play with this more. Again, I gotta take it apart one more time, peel off that film, but there we go. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic night.